Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. First of all, we're so close to 500 subscribers, so thank you for that. And if you're not subscribed, please do me a big favor and hit the subscribe button. I do like Marvel Omnibus videos, comic analysis videos, I have an X-Men podcast on the channel, lots of fun stuff and lots of fun stuff to come. But today we're talking about the X-Men Omnibus Volume 1. This is the Silver Age Omnibus. So without further ado, let's take a look at the book. All right, first of all, here is the cover of the book, and it is, of course, X-Men number one, featuring the original five versus Magneto. And here is the spine of the book. As you can see, it's the new Marvel font, which is a lot smaller, and we've got a little picture there, and it is actually the original five again, but also with Charles Xavier in it. And of course, here is the back of the book, featuring all the X-Men issues that are collected in here. Alright, so let's crack into X-Men Omnibus Volume 1. And so what does this collect? Well, quite simply, it collects X-Men number 1 through 31. Now, that is the 1963 X-Men series, so this is the original X-Men book. This contains the first appearance of so many characters, including the original five X-Men, which are Jean Grey, Cyclops, Iceman, Beast, and Angel. It also contains the first appearance of... Professor Xavier, Magneto, and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and a lot of other characters. So this is really, really old-school stuff, guys. I mean, Stan Lee writes about half of this omnibus, and then Jack Kirby basically pencils that half, and then Roy Thomas writes the other half. And this is, of course, a Silver Age Marvel book. And so what I normally say when taking a look at books like this is that the way I see it is, I read these not so much for narrative enjoyment, but sort of as a historical check-in. This is the foundation of something that just blossomed into a much beloved and exceptional series. This helps add some context for our modern readings and really any of the books that come past this. It's nice to see where we started sometimes, and it's nice to see the journey and how it's progressed, even if the dialogue here and the way the stories are structured make them a little dense and a little tough to get through at times. It's also always just fun for me to appreciate this old school comic artwork. I mean I think there's always going to be something inherently charming about it and it's cool to see the characters that I've really grown to love in that old school artwork. But I think this omnibus is going to be one that is going to probably specifically be for people who are sort of hardcore into comic books or are hardcore into the X-Men because it's not really digestible for someone who's new to comics or who's trying to get into X-Men. For that, I would probably recommend you actually start with the Claremont run instead of this old school stuff. And don't get me wrong, Claremont has a lot of dense writing too. I mean, he's a very wordy writer, but it feels more purposeful than it is here. And this book seems like there's less importance on the longevity of the comic book storytelling. I know the old adage used to be that every comic is somebody's first comic, so what happens in here is just each issue is a lot of recapping of what happened in the past, what everyone's powers are. So there's a lot of wasted words for those of us who are reading this as we are in the collected omnibus format. Because it's like, yeah, we just read that, so we know what happens. And I know Claremont's issues do that too somewhat because Marvel has always had that adage. Um, maybe less so today with more modern books. But with Claremont and writing in that era, they also were like, hey, this is going to be someone's first comic book. But, I don't know, it's done tighter in those books. Back here, it is not done nearly as neat, and it's very, very word soupy. Also worth noting that the characterizations of some of the characters in here aren't really what we're familiar with or what you would be familiar with if you're somebody who has read the Claremont era or if you're somebody who has read more modern issues of X-Men books or have just seen them pop up over time in your other Marvel comics. And that is, for example, Charles Xavier in here. I just think he's he's written very one-dimensionally as just this very strict professor. And I know sometimes he is a strict professor, and he is a bit of a jerk sometimes, like he is here. But it's just too one-dimensional here, and there's not much more depth to the character. Also, if you're looking for, you know, the Holocaust survivor, the Jewish Magneto story... That's not here either. That is something that Claremont also introduced later as he sort of retconned who Magneto is and his origins. The Magneto storylines in here actually can get a little repetitive, um, although I think they're kind of worth reading just for the fun of it, because some thoughts that I had while I was reading that very first X-Men issue in here where Magneto goes and takes over a military missile base, I was like, because I had just read the New Mutants Omnibus Volume 2, and I was like, wow, Magneto went from taking over a military base, just being this international terrorist who's just 
always threatening humanity, to being the headmaster of the Charles Xavier School and chaperoning like a dance. Like, I just think that's a really funny character arc that he, he went through, his redemption era. And I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love his ideological exploration, really trying everything out. I don't think we have to hold these classics up as sort of the paragon of perfect writing in comic books, but it is always nice to sort of go back and appreciate where we came from and how we blossomed into what we have today. So even for that reason too, if you want to support that kind of thing, I think the book might be worth a pickup. Um, like I said, not a good introductory book for somebody, but if you want to add to the context of your X-Men knowledge, if you want to pick up some little X-Men tidbits of trivia in here, then this is definitely going to be a book that you should take a look at. But thank you guys so much for watching. I've got a couple more Omnibus videos coming out soon, so please like, comment, and subscribe. We're so close to 500 subscribers, that'd be such an awesome achievement. So like I said, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and you have a great rest of your day.